Welcome to this episode of A Brighter Day. I'm your host, Dr. Maurice Joyner. The title of today's message is, Are You Equipped for the Battle? Again, are you equipped for the battle? Let's turn our Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And we begin at verse 10. And it reads, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. It says that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is not a battle against flesh and blood, but a spiritual battle against the wild tricks of the devil. Therefore, we must equip and train ourselves differently. It says that therefore we are to take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand and having done all to stand to stand therefore having girded our waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness having showed our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. That we are to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all of the perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Let's address each piece of God's armor of protection for this spiritual battle so that we can stand fully equipped and ready to defend ourselves. God tells us about his belt. The belt represents God's word of truth. But God tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the light. God's word is what holds the entire armor together. Again, God's word holds the entire armor together. God's word of truth. Therefore, we must make learning and living God's word part of our everyday life. Remember, this is a spiritual warfare. And the more we are equipped with God's word, God's word of truth, the greater our defense becomes. Then there's the breastplate. In the Roman days, as the soldier prepared for battle, they wore a breastplate. A breastplate made of metal, which history state weighed about seven pounds to protect the soldier's vital organs, the heart. Spiritually, our breastplate represents the price Jesus paid for us on the cross, giving his life for our sin and through salvation, the breastplate of righteousness protects our heart from the enemy and we obey God's word. Each time we disobey God's word, it leaves an opening in our armor for the enemy to enter. 
Then there's the shoes, the peace shoes. The peace shoes is our footage that keeps the body standing firm. That keeps the body standing firm on God's words of truth. If we lose footage, the entire body falls. Therefore, we must be prepared at all times, offensive and defensive. We are to dig into the gospel of truth. So when the enemy comes to attack with doubts and deception, we must have a counterattack, which is the word of truth, to fire back and surely the enemy will flee. The enemy will flee because he's fearful of God's word. Then we have the shield. The shield was used by the soldiers to cover the, their entire body and protect them from the flaming arrows in a far distance and to push the enemy away in close contact. Our shield is the shield of faith. Hebrews 11 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Therefore, we must believe. We must believe and walk in the truth. We must walk in the truth to shield ourselves from every tactics that the enemy tries to bring to us. And then we have the helmet. We are to wear the helmet of salvation to protect our mind, which is the enemy battleground. Therefore, we must understand the terrain and stand ready at the guard post in God's words of truth to protect our mind from the evil tactics that the enemy comes to bring to us. Any lies that the enemy tries to put in our mind, we must reject them immediately with God's words of truth. James 4 and 7 tells us that therefore submit to God. Submit to God's words and resist the devil and he will flee from us. Then there's the sword. The sword represents the word of God. Hebrew 4 and 12 says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit of joints or marrow and discerning the thoughts and the intention of the heart. The word of God reaches the heart of the soul through our relationship with Christ, which makes us strong and defend our heart from the evil tricks of the enemy. Have you ever experienced a conversation with someone and wanted to say something and the words would not come out? That's the maturity of God's Holy Spirit that keeps us in his righteousness. Being that this is a sword, it requires knowledge, discipline, experience in the acts of obedience to know how to use it skillfully for the righteousness of God. In summary, I'd like to, to go to a story in the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 17 tells of the story of David and Goliath. Goliath being this humongous giant Philistine, which everyone feared, and David a young, handsome shepherd who cared for the sheep, with no experience in physical war battle, but filled with faith. You see, during the course of David caring for the sheep, he had come to experience God's mercy and grace. And as the story continues, David said to King Saul, let no man's heart fail because of Goliath. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And of course, Saul said to David, 
David, you are not able to go against this humongous Philistine. You are unable to fight with him. Well, you're just only a youth. And Goliath is a man of war. Been trained since his years of youth. But David replied back to King Saul. He said, perhaps I need to enlighten him. So he said to him, said, your servant used to be, used to keep his father's sheep. And when a lion or bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, young David said that he went after it. That fear did not come upon him, that he went after it. And when he went after it, he struck it and delivered the lamb from his mouth. And it doesn't stop there. David goes on to say that when the lion and the bear arose against him, that he caught it by the beard and struck and killed it. David said, your servant has killed both lion and bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine would be just like one of them. Seeing he has deprived the armies of the living God. Moreover, David said that the Lord who delivered me from the pole of the lion. And from the pole of the bear, he would deliver me from the hands of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go. Go, David. And may the Lord be with you. And as the story goes on, King Saul Closed David with his armor. He gave David his bronze helmet. He gave David his coat of nail. In other words, his breastplate, which resembled the fish scales over lacking made of gold. He went on and gave to him his sword the sword that he used in battle. But as young David tried to walk, it was difficult. So David took off King Saul's armor, stripped it all off, and Saul, you can keep your armor because it hasn't been proven to me. And young David said, I would take my own armor. That the armor that God has proven to me to be effective time and time again. So young David took up his shepherd bag and five stones and his sling and approached Goliath. And in the eyes of Goliath, he saw a young, handsome man and began to boast to David as to what he was going to do to him. But David wasn't interested in all of the talking and said to Goliath, you come to me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. Young David spoke with great faith. And he went on and told Goliath, this day, this day, Goliath, the Lord will hand you over to me and I will strike you down and cut off your head. 
and all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with swords and spears. But the battle is the Lord. And he will, and the battle in, is the Lord, and he will give you into my hands, Goliath. You will be delivered into my hands, Goliath. And so it was. You have some young David prevail against Goliath. What is your Goliath today? What is your battle? And are you equipped to proclaim the victory? Are you equipped with the whole armor of protection? With God's whole armor or protection? Or are you, or are you weighed down by the enemy? Tricks and false deception. Are you girded in the belt of truth through the studying of God's word? Do you have a relationship with God and know of his faithful promises? Are you covered in God's breastplate of righteousness and believe in your heart that he so loved you that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you? Are you walking in God's peace shoes, not looking at the problems, not looking at the situation, not looking at the issue, but in the truth of who God says he is? God tells us in Exodus 14 and 14 that he will fight for us. And we shall hold our peace. That he will fight for us. And we shall hold our peace. So are you holding firmly to God's shield of faith? Speaking victory over your every circumstance. Your every battle. Just as young David spoke to Goliath. Is your mind guarded by God's helmet of salvation? With the knowledge and the understanding of God's words of truth? Are you keeping your sword sharp through the studying of God's words? Brood it down for a spiritual nourishment to your heart. What is your Goliath? What is your Goliath today? And are you equipped for the battle? Are you equipped for the battle in God's whole armor of protection? Again, this is not a physical battle, but a spiritual one. Just as a military soldier, the training for battle doesn't end after basic training. It continues. And that which the soldier learned in basic training becomes sharper and remain with them throughout their lives. Galatians 5 and 17 says, For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contraries to one another. So that we do not do the things that we wish. That we do not do the things that we wish. The things which the enemy comes and try to deceive us with. We walk in the word of Christ. Accepting God as our Savior is to enter into our spiritual journey. And there will be battles. Therefore, we must prepare accordingly. 
and be strong in the Lord. Strong in the Lord and the power of his might. They were to put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Therefore, we must take up the whole armor of God that we may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all, stand. And having done all, stand. Therefore, instead of having to put on the breastplate of righteousness, having showed our feet for the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith with which we will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. I'm here to say that there's no greater armor than God's armor of protection. The armor which has been purchased by the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The armor which has been proven to be effective. The whole armor of God. And no matter how big the battle may appear, no matter how big the battle may appear. No matter how big Goliath thought that he looked to little young David. David said no. No. You may look humongous to everyone else, but to young David, he was just small in his eyesight. Because he knew that his God, the God that he served, the God that we serve, is much greater and much bigger. So, therefore, we are to continue to march forward in God's presence, fully equipped in his whole armor of protection to proclaim his victory, to proclaim his victory. We win. Yes, we do. We win. We win. For the glory of his name. Until next time, Make every day a brighter day so those who see you, they see him, our Lord and Savior. I would like to close this message today with a song by William McDowell, which is titled Stay. I invite you to stay in God's presence. God wants you to stay in his presence. And I trust that you'll be lifted in the spirit, lifted in the spirit of faith in our our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
a storm. Because we stay here in the presence of the Lord. And no one had to say a word. Couldn't even make a sound. But I give up everything for this treasure of fire. I don't want you to go Cause my heart is burning In your presence, Lord Please stay I don't want you to go In your presence, Lord. Like I feel, would you cry that out in this room? Say, 